I'm discussing the second element, authentic task. An authentic task in a learning environment must have real world relevance. It would require production of knowledge rather than simple reproduction of knowledge. It would be a complex and ill-defined task and it would be completed over a longer period of time. By ill-defined, I don't mean badly de defined or badly described. It means that it has to be broad enough uh, for students to actually have to make decisions about how they will complete the task. If you provide step-by-step -step instructions, even if it's set in the real world, you're depriving the students of very important decision-making that they need to make in order to um, create the final product that they make. An example I've got there just on the right is one made by Marielina Pays Marden. And she, was, she is te a teacher of Italian and an authentic task that she gave her students was Rather than do simple language vocabulary exercises, she got them in groups to plan a trip to Italy. And in so doing, they used a learning management system or a, um, a, the discussion forums in particular to speak with native Italian speakers and to plan a trip to Italy where they planned the itinerary, they planned what kind of food that the people might want to have on the trip, information about the culture of, of Italy and so forth. Um, and so in so doing, everything was done in the target language and it gave a much more authentic um, uh, context for, for the learning that the students did. Now, of all the elements of authentic learning, we would say that it's the task that matters the most. So clearly this is not an authentic task, uh, nor these very popular word search puzzles that you see in, in schools all over. Um, but I want to show you now an example of a, a literature one which came from a teacher in the Philippines, Warren Ambert. Uh, he's created a, a very authentic um, task where the students learning Shakespeare have to recreate a, a Shakespearean, uh, either um, scenes from Shakespeare's plays or the whole play. And uh, this particular one here that you can see is the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet set in the Philippines. So students modernise the language in a Shakespearean play or they localise the setting to reflect the modern local community and use the, the original language. So um, they, they then film the scene, they act out the scenes and film them and edit them. And then they also keep a personal reflection as they're doing that to talk about how they, they did the, uh, the play. An occupational health and safety unit by Janice Jantz at Curtin University where she created a virtual laboratory. Um, in the virtual laboratory you can go into uh, the, the lab and you can investigate the occupational and health, health and safety issues that that are evident in this space. So you can move around, you can um, go in and out, you can go in and, and investigate something a little bit more closely if you think that there might be some breach of an occupational health and safety issue, like for here for instance, I can move in there uh, and I can see that there's a flame and with flammable liquids. So um, basically, she's created a, an environment within which students can explore a complex issue. And in this case, they do an occupational health and safety report. Now, um, I just wanted to point out that sometimes you can have an excellent complex learning environment, a great task, but you can really take away a lot of the authentic elements of it by providing too much help. Now, for instance, if you were to take that learning environment, the, the QuickTime VR lab, and instead of, instead of giving them a complex task, as the teacher normally does, 
you were to, t to give instead a list of specific questions for students to look at as they went through the lab. For, in for instance, you know, what biological materials are present in the lab? What hazards are evident? How many instances of a contamination? Where you're leading them through, then you're really depriving the students of, of a really authentic task and you're making a complex problem something much more simple. So some questions to ask about your authentic task to, to just say, well, is it really an authentic task? Some questions can help. So these uh, questions like, does the task mirror the kind of task performed in, in real-world applications? Is the task presented as an overarching complex problem or as a series of small sub-steps, in which case it would not be an authentic task? Do students work on the task for weeks rather than minutes or hours? An authentic task shouldn't be able to be done in just a few minutes. And are students able to choose information from a variety of inputs and sometimes including relevant and irrelevant sources?